It's fall here at the cottage. The morning air is crisp and the hillsides are ablaze with orchards that are turning yellow and orange and red. And it is beautiful. This is the time of year that we're always looking ahead, preparing for what we know is coming, those winter days. A season of anticipation, as right. it were. And every morning we get up to milk, we just know it's one, one more morning closer to those really, really cold mornings. <laughs> you know, snow on the ground. And it really makes me think of all the things that we still need to get done before <laughs> the snow flies. I know that we have a very big day ahead of us here on the farm today. So while Stu is out finishing the morning chores, I thought it would be a welcome treat to spend some time making some homemade chocolate croissants, a very favorite treat of mine. And I'm hoping that will give him the energy that he needs to continue on because we are in month, I don't know, 15, 16, 17 of doing our big barn project. And today is the day where the final coat of paint is going on and it is a day to celebrate. And what better way to celebrate than with chocolate croissants? Funny, every year I say to myself, I'm not going to get beat by the winter. <laughs> I'm going to win. I'm going to get all my <laughs> projects done. I'm going to, everything is going to be finished before the snow comes. Everything's going to be perfect. And somehow I always end up racing anyways, trying to, trying to beat the the snow but we are getting close on this on this barn project we're so. getting closer and i'm happy to be inside where it's much warmer getting the home ready for the next season ahead while you finish out those outside projects i love this time of year in the home growing up my mom always had fridays off from work so whenever i came home from school on fridays there would be a special treat out. There would be fresh dish towels or the furniture would be rearranged or she would have cleaned all the laundry and it would be folded up on the couch and the house always smelled like fresh air and bleach. And it was something that really ingrained in me. And I find myself seeking that cleanliness often, but most certainly when the seasons begin to change and you just want to feel that new life breathed into an old space. So I was very happy to spend some time today going through the home and freshening it up for autumn. That experience kind of um, carried over into your own life. And now it's almost like a, a discipline for you. It's uh, something that it's almost like you can't not do it. I can't not do it. Mm -hmm. I want extra fluffy warm blankets on everybody's beds and I want clean windows and freshly baked croissants because our family is here all the time we're all here anyway whether it's Tuesday or Saturday or Sunday and I find that the pattern that my mom sort of instilled in me this pattern of fluffing and tending and caring for the home it makes such a difference in the atmosphere of the home and if we can change the atmosphere of our home, a lot of times we can change the attitude of our home. And that is a beautiful thing, especially with all of these little crazy children running around. And you know, here's the other thing. Some may say that bribery is a bad thing, but for the homeschooling parents, bribery is a pretty powerful tool, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a powerful tool for us. I'm not above bribing <laughs> our our kids with croissants so that they keep going on their on their homeschool work. It's fairly effective too. Oh, it's incredibly effective. <laughs> it's that little boost we need to get through the rest of the day. Though truthfully, when the sun's out and the air is this crisp and cool and clean, it's not so bad to get through the days.
a big chore on the list for us this season is getting all the firewood cut and stacked and brought into the clean dry barn where we keep the hay and also a big load of it to be brought inside. We have a cold front coming this week and even though it's just the end of October, we're looking at facing teen digits. Y'all, that's cold. And so this is a chore that we couldn't really push back any further. And that's kind of how it goes on the farm. You think you've got time, like you were saying, Stu, you think this is the year we're gonna get on top of it and it's not gonna get the better of us. And then it's 15 degrees and all of a sudden the house is really cold because it's old and drafty and you need the firewood stacked. And we're getting slowly better at anticipating those sorts of changes. And it's just the time of year where you want a fire going, you know, talking about cultivating that environment and that atmosphere. Gotta have a fire. Gotta, gotta have these, a fire. On these crisp, cool days, yeah. Gotta have greenery. You gotta have beauty in the home because we're spending so much more time in here now that it's getting dark so early. And we can take a little bit of time to devote to cultivating that beautiful space. We're all the better for it. So you love to beautify our spaces and you particularly love to do it kind of changing it with with the seasons thank you for noticing yeah um what what are the things that kind of inspire you and motivate you well for those of you who are new here on our channel a big welcome to you and it's important that you know i was a florist for a decade and so my love language has been flowers for many many years and so when i'm decorating for the seasons I love to look around the gardens and just say, what are you offering right now? What do you have for me to take? And so right now, even if it's dried sunflower heads and sage to put by the kitchen sink, I'll take it. I am all over it. So nature, I mean, just looking out and seeing what's there that we can bring in, what's there that the colors we can play with or the textures we can play with. So you draw from nature? From our gardens, from the potager. And it's okay with you if the flowers are dried and not in their prime because that's kind of fitting for the season. It's perfect for the season. And, and I want the home to reflect that season. It's not summer anymore. So the roses have passed and that's okay. What are you trying to capture when you... Um, change things around or or um, create something in keeping with the season? What, what feel or? I think pretty traditional feels in that, you know, autumn and winter, they both have this very warm, comforting feel to them. And so when I'm fluffing up the house for this season, I want it to feel that way. Dried flowers feel that way to me. Flannel fabrics feel that way to me just a refresh and attention to space and warm colors and tablecloths. Those are very simple ways to incorporate that sort of feeling into your home. You know, contrast that with spring and summer, let's say, where things are airier and lighter and cleaner. You know, this isn't the season for that. This is the season to bring things in, to tuck in, to get warm, to feel cozy and overflowing. I mean, truly our larder is the fullest that it will be all year right now. This is a time of abundance, even though the gardens have ceased to give. And that's a time to celebrate. So decorating for autumn doesn't mean that you need to go and buy a bunch of home decor from Target. What it means is that you have the opportunity to open your eyes to the world around you, to see what the land around you is giving right now, and just to find simple ways to bring that in. So for example, just using cuttings from the garden or from the local forest to decorate the fireplace. It's a perfect example of that.
Another great example of this was this creative whim I just had to ride. And if you're a creative person, you know that feeling where you get the surge and you just kind of have to go with it. So when Stu was out clipping the grapevines the other day, which needed to be done, they were very untidy. I kind of just got this feeling thinking, I bet I could weave those into a wreath. Great grapevine wreaths are very common. I'd never made one before, but I thought I'm gonna give it a go. And sure enough, was able to make a wreath. And then once I created that, I thought, you know all those dried flowers I have hanging in my kitchen. I bet I could incorporate those into this wreath as well. And so the creative surge continued and I got to spend some time in my new she shed with Georgia creating a beautiful autumn wreath for the living room. You did a really, really good job with that. Hey, thank so, you. Yeah, it turned out really cool. Um, I've got moves you've never seen. <laughs> Actually, you've seen these plenty of times. Yeah, you definitely looked very much in your element. It took me right back to the days when you were in the flower shop preparing all your arrangements and everything. I know, you definitely know, it was wonderful element. to just feel my hands move like that again. And I think, you know, maybe other moms can relate. When you have children, a lot of things like this that you used to do, whatever that may be, you, you stop to do for a season because you're just so busy keeping little humans alive. And that's a beautiful thing. But man, did it feel good to get back in the saddle. Mm -hmm. So when I'm creating a piece like this, my goal is to always bring the outdoors in because that's a very fun in-between to live in. And so gathering up elements from around the home, gathering up a collection of mosses, for example, that we get from the local forest when we go for hikes, pine cones gathered by the children, um, a variety of flowers that we've gathered from dried from the gardens, the goal is to bring that all together into a thing of beauty so that when the dull of February hits, there is something bright, um, full of life for us to look back to, to remember what's to come. I think we're on our way to embracing the rest of fall and the beginning of winter. It'll be beautiful. Beautiful.